This is Morning Perfect Bass. I am Ben Velding. I am going to work on my Perfect Bass a little bit every day. And I'm going to take a nap right now. And after a couple of months, we are going to see how much progress we've gotten. So today I'm not, I'm not talking about the news. I am going to talk about this idea that I had where if you're familiar with the webcomic Dumbing of Age, uh, it is a rehash of the comics that were previously made by Dave Willis. He's been doing web comics for like, God, maybe 20 years now. And, ah, uh, damn, just just warehouse, just warehouse. Um, so, and then uh, it was they were really dramatic, very different tones, very different um, ty- types of scenarios. You had like alien invasions fighting off, and then college drama, and then. Uh, toy store, retail, short-packed stuff. Anyway, he eventually just put all of his characters into one big series where everybody's like fluffy and living together and going to the same university and no one dies and it's it's great. Um, and I thought, wow, that's a crazy idea. And then I thought, hey, you could do that with Star Trek. Actually, I thought, you could do that with Star Trek. What, where did I get that idea from? And then I'm like, oh yeah, Dave, Dave Willis did it. And the, the webcomic he calls Zemming of Age. So I'm like, oh, that's really great. I'm sure a lot of people would actually like the idea of going back to, say, a small ship, uh, maybe Voyager, probably the original Enterprise, and saying, okay, everyone who works on this ship is an actual Star Trek person from Star Trek, from different times and different ships on the bullshit, but they're all alive. And it's just just Star Trek people having fun with Star Trek people. Uh, Yeah. This, uh, I really wanted to do like the metal catwalk for this, for the second level where we connect the, the, the stairway in the core to the outside of the core to get us to the wings. And that just did not work at all. I, they, they make a hole. There's a hole in there, which is fascinating. I'm not completely opposed to that. I just know that, you know, one time in a hundred, I'm going to fall through and I am going to fucking hate it. So... It's going to come down. I am probably going to replace it with something really disappointing, like uh, stone brick slabs or just stone slabs. They are going to be releasing in the next update, 1.14. They are going to have a whole bunch of new stairs and slabs for different types of stone materials. So maybe those will work well. I don't. I don't think I'll be able to do stairs, uh, like sideways stairs. I definitely. Definitely will not be able to do that. Um, ah, damn it. I wish I could, though. That'd be great. Because um, that's really the look I'm looking for. Something very open. Um, I wonder if I could just do, say, the iron fence on either side. And then maybe uh, a solid a solid block in the middle. So I still get that, that, that wiry look of a catwalk. But I don't have a giant hole that I can fall through on it, regardless. So today it is just a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of work around the perfect base. Um, I might do some work on the walls here in a bit. Eh, probably actually work on the walls. Anyway, so so the deal is is that you have a small ship, the Enterprise, and you know everyone on it is from from the Star Trek, starting with you know main cast. And then they all kind of work and have different relationships. Some of them are different ages. One of the things, you know, your first question, if you're like me, is who is the captain? And from the hip, it's it's James T. Kirk, because why would it not fucking be James T. Kirk? Um, He's the quintessential captain. He is a very dynamic character. He can sock it into a lot of different stories. So then I thought, well, who's going to be his XO? And I think the most XO of the of the command personnel we've seen to date, well, it's probably Commander Riker, but right after that is Ben Sisko. Uh, it would be interesting to see Ben Sisko hanging around in uh, one of those red original series shirts, just being uh, Captain Kirk's number two instead of Spock. So basically everyone has to fit into a hierarchy down to enlisted personnel. Which means some people are going to get demoted. Um, the downright excessive number of medical personnel established in canon 
uh, and engineers requires a lot of shuffling around. So I've, I've, I decided to go with 36 central Star Trek characters. The rest of them could just be supporting cast, recurring characters, background characters, etc. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing with the Enterprise, with the Star Trek Enterprise crew later. So, by the way, just building up these walls, just going to do it in dirt. I have not wanted to do that. I've wanted to put an aesthetic design on the outside for a long time when doing these walls. I knew it was going to happen. The, the walls are three thick. I can therefore surface either side of the walls, like the internal and the external, with designs that are appropriate to whatever they're going around and, uh, and not really sacrifice the integrity of the wall and not have any conflicts. And there's still a median wall in between for generic blast and fire resistance as well as the uh, just a little bit of wiggle room in case I want to up the aesthetic. I've often built bases in the past with walls that are one thick between the rooms or between the sections and it's always bad. That always bites me square in the ass. If, if you've seen the warehouse of Perfect Base 4, you've seen how the the chests dig into the wall and that gives it a lot of extra dimension that gives me something else to work with. So uh, the, the alternative to just doing the giant big gross dirt walls has been uh, to just sit the fuck down and do some aesthetics. I am not going to do that. I'm going to throw it up in dirt then I'm going to shovel it down as I design aesthetics later. Um, I don't even know what the aesthetics would look like. I think to some extent, I do want to work from the inside of the wings out um, because windows and doors and the connections, uh, you saw that little bit of sand that I built around on the other wall that was specifically because there are going to be external paths which lead directly from wing to wing. So, uh, ah, damn it. So that means that uh, there are going to be external links to these things, which I actually have done a little bit of design work with. I want to get these walls up before I dig those out and put them down. I'd, I would like to think that those are step two. But for now, I'm just going to put up the three thick walls uh, all around the base here to try to establish the shape. And then I'm just going to customize it later, which is just such a poisonous thing to say in Minecraft. I've been looking at uh, perfect bases three and two, and even one. I didn't realize perfect base one kind of is perfect base one, but it is um, a very simple design based around having everything I need uh, branching off of a central core. Anyway, maybe I'll do uh, a tour of that one day. Regardless, um, one, and, and when I look at those old bases, there are a lot of, I will do it later buried in them, which nature of the beast, I guess. I've actually, um, I plan on building up a pretty good stock of footage and then getting, uh, talking with it and using it, incorporating it. Uh, but in the meantime, like once I have, if I let that footage get ahead of me, which according to my track record, I absolutely will, I'm going to have to find some way to ease my desire to play, oh shit, fucking desire to play Minecraft and... Uh, without really backing that up any further than it is and making it just an overwhelming amount of content. So I'm probably going to be doing some work in the nether here in the next couple of days. Oh, the realm is, oof, yeah, no, I got like two days, I think. As of recording, I've got two days until the realm goes down. I got to open it up, buy it up again. But regardless, yes, Star Trek. Star Trek, so this this interesting Star Trek idea. So everyone gets shuffled around. Some people aren't going to be like, you know, top tier officers anymore. Some are going to get cut down. I'm trying to connect characters to parallel some of their relationships while other relationships are still going to be around. I mean, Wesley is going to be Dr. Crusher's daughter. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Son, sorry, son. So <laughs> we're not changing things that much. So, you know, regardless of how they end up, they're going to have that connection. But I also wanted to make interesting connections within departments and within ranks, you know, where you have a bunch of lower level enlisted guys where, of course, they're going to they are going to hang together and have a common birthing. So let's um, let's go down the department role and then kind of go down the chain of command within each each department. Each department's going to have a department head who is also a member of the senior staff. Uh, it is going to have uh, kind of a senior officer, a junior officer 
And then we're going to go down to the enlisted ranks where we've got our senior enlisted or chiefs or whatnot. And then you're going to have uh, junior enlisted. And then in, in doing the math, I figured that actually a lot of these people, mostly Voyager guys, have criminal records. So I can actually make like... Um, Kind of like a, a, a rough enlisted, you're, it was this or prison, maybe. Uh, which, yes, yes, it does go against my own perception of Starfleet and the Federation. But on the other hand, maybe it is just, you know, you did a crime. You know, we would like you to do community service. That community service is being in Starfleet. Maybe you were in Starfleet and you what did a crime. So now you're busted down to, to the bottom of the, the barrel. Um, but you still want to serve. So... Um, Regardless, regardless, um, there's going to be that lower level of, hey, you have a criminal record, you're still in Starfleet, you can still work your way up. Uh, maybe some of the high-ranking people have done that. The division between enlisted and officer makes no sense in a universe where college is free. So therefore, I think it is just a matter of... I just watched The Drumhead, where we had Simon Tarsus, who was a uh, crewman first class, who didn't want to go to the academy because he was just so gung-ho to get out there. And I think that's... Fine. I think the after a certain point, the Federation would go, oh yeah, now you got work experience. You can become an officer. And someone like, say, Chief O'Brien, just like, nah, I never want to do that. I don't, I don't want the increased expectations. I don't want to like be a leader. I just want to, is, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, I, I just want to do my thing. You know, I don't, I don't want to be a paragon. I don't want to, um, I very much like the job that I do. And this is kind of just a job for me, which is ironic because Chief O'Brien is one of the people who is the most, oh yeah, this is my career, so I gotta bite the bullet for it, regardless. Uh, our, our divisions are therefore going to be uh, mission specialization, science, of course, security, of course, and then we're gonna have medical, and the last two are gonna be navigation slash engineering and operations as, as separate um, systemic versus it's all about the engines type of uh, engineering type divisions so engineering is literally related to the engine so obviously our, our chief engineer is going to be scotty uh lieutenant commander scott uh operations his counterpart in operations is going to be ben cisco who is also the executive officer i think he's got uh, i think there's i think there's some genuine compare and contrast with cisco and scotty and kirk if you will remember, Cisco spent time at the shipyards. I believe he helped design the Defiant. Uh, so my reasonable belief is that he came up through engineering. Um, the Visitor, one of the most popular Deep Space Nine episodes, one of the most acclaimed Deep Space Nine episodes. Uh, like that entirely kicks off because he's down in engineering getting his hands dirty during an emergency. So that, I think that fits perfectly with him. Uh, mission... Uh, let, let me go down, let me go down the divisions. Uh, so Cisco is, is the head of operations. Uh, he wears, I'm going to have him in a green shirt. Mission specialist, I'm going to have wear green. Medical blue, science blue. Uh, navigation engineering red, security red. Just to keep everything kind of classic. I know that takes our two mechanically minded divisions and gives them separate uh, specialties. I'm, I'm just going to keep it just to balance the colors. So anyway, Cisco, Chief of Operations, full on commander. Uh, Harry Kim. This is an older Harry Kim. He didn't he didn't get lost on Voyager. Uh, he is assigned to the ship. He's had a sterling career, promising Starfleet career. We always knew he had. Loves clarinet. He is a uh, lieutenant commander, perhaps senior lieutenant. Uh, below him is Uhura, who is an intent, a lieutenant, possibly Lieutenant JG. Uh, slightly younger Uhura. I, no wait, she she was lieutenant in the original series, so you know, perhaps, uh, or her from the original series. She doesn't just handle communications. She handles a, a variety of shipboard systems, uh, including communications. And then we get into the enlisted ranks. Our senior enlisted is going to be Chief O'Brien. Uh, our, our middle, uh, enlisted is going to be Data. Data maybe, um, doesn't immediately become an officer. He has a history before becoming a lieutenant commander who doesn't know how to deal with people because that always seemed weird. This would be a younger Data, um, perhaps much more like Data from Season 1, and yet a lower rank, still trying to get his feet wet. Uh, you don't have that uh, dissonance there between the Data we know and 
um, the data with the really high rank who runs an entire division that we never see. Uh, and finally, we have Nog. And Nog is, again, uh, he has a criminal record. He wants to serve in Starfleet. So uh, he starts off in, in a proverbial hole. It's still the same young Nog that we know as Ensign Nog. Uh, not a war veteran, uh, just, just a hard worker who has a very different perspective. Um, I think this keeps his relationship with O'Brien. I think you have a lot of potential with, uh, say, Uhura and O'Brien, because there's always, there's always a junior officer, senior enlisted type of thing there. Uh, I think there's a great chance for them to work together. Um, Data and Uhura working in the same place is great. You can make up a lot with Kim, where he is now a, a senior officer trying to manage someone like O'Brien. Uh, he's, he's fairly buttoned down, very formal. Uh, he's not going to have that Tom Paris, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle type of dynamic, but you are going to have Chief O'Brien, you're going to have Uhura, you're going to have Nog, and then you're going to have um, Harry Kim and Data, who kind of balance that out. Uhura, who I think has a great ability to swing between casual and professional. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Ben Sisko, who is uh, the dad. A happily married uh, Ben Sisko, I might add, because, you know... Uh, Wolf three five Wolf three five nine needn't necessarily happen. So every so often we go to the Starbase and we see Jennifer Cisco, uh, Jake Cisco. Maybe even Jennifer Cisco gets assigned to the ship. Um, you know, I don't want to write out Cassidy Yates. That's something to be worked on later. Um, maybe maybe polyamory is just fine in the future. You know, um, that's it's something to work on. So. Anyway, uh, mission specialization, I'm going to put Janeway at the top of this, because mission specialization does kind of come across as the miscellany department. Um, uh, they just do whatever. They, they host diplomatic people. Um, they uh, coordinate archaeological expeditions, which the science division would have something to do with. But um, they're a mission pod of individuals. Uh, you've got uh, Commander Janeway. You've got Lieutenant Commander Troy. You have Lieutenant Rand. Um, you have the senior enlisted of the emergency metal medical hologram. Obviously, Voyager didn't happen here. So, you know, there was just another ship with an emergency medical hologram. Maybe the entire ship died from radiation or something. The hologram had to improvise, so he's more, more well-rounded, which is very much within the idiom of the EMH. Um, he does have a lot of experience. Um, he is not a doctor anymore. Uh, if he ever was, he could just be an emergency something else hologram. But the, the basic character of the, the EMH, where he is uh, an intellectual, a thinker who appreciates music, uh, that part of the character does not need him to be a doctor. Uh, he can be just as brusque and just as... Um, <laughs> just as... Just the same character as he was... Um, he just has a different job because I think there is a disconnect between the, the emergency medical hologram and um, and the character of the doctor, although I hate to call him the doctor. But uh, you get Dax 2, Esri Dax, who is from the future, uh, canonically from the future. And then you get Chakotay. Again, this, this keeps Jane and Chakotay together. I kind of like that dynamic. That puts Chakotay way down. This is a young Chakotay. So we're going to have to cool it on any kind of romance there. But um, you can see Dax is young and eager. Um, the EMH is very formal. Uh, Rand and Troy and Janeway could probably do anything when you put them together. Um, they probably have the most laid back division, but also the division that can, uh, I don't want to say turn rocks into replicators because that's O'Brien's deal, but they are definitely the guys who are pulling out the, the, um, the hoses and the diagrams whenever there's, there's a real problem. I know that's, that's a specifically engineering example, but um, basically whatever weird mission it is, these guys get the first boots on the ground, they get the first plan of attack, um, and they take care of everything else that, that other people do not take care of. Um, medical, there are so many medical people at Star Trek. There are so many of them. Um, okay, so obviously Beverly Crusher is the head of that, that whole shindig obviously. Uh, Pulaski is her number two. Uh, Bashir uh, rounds out the bottom of the, the Doctor Doctor group. And below that we have Chapel Kess, and Paris. Paris obviously is the one with the criminal record. Uh, Chapel Senior enlisted. Uh, her jump to officership I think is, is kind of, uh, I don't want to say predetermined, pre 
pre-fated, predestined, that's the word. But regardless, she is currently uh, still uh, Nurse Chapel, Senior Nurse Chapel. Um, again, basically, there's not a lot of character work on this where I don't have to composite anything because it's, it's really just winnowing guys down. Um, uh, if you dial Pulaski back a few notches and then you pair her with uh, Season 1 Bashir, I think you get some interesting perspectives. You can see uh, Pulaski maybe become crustier and maybe become... Uh, more of the person that we rue generally and understand the path that leads her there. You get to humanize a, a reviled, not reviled, but very much unliked uh, character in Star Trek. Uh, Dr. Crusher is just a natural leader. We don't really see a lot of that. Uh, putting her in the command staff and putting her in charge of her own division uh, would be great. Um, Chapel, Kess, and Paris are, are natural shoe ins. Paris picked up a medical tricorder once. It's it's, we got a lot of we got a lot of guys in the navigation department too. Okay, he can still be a good pilot. He can still be a hotshot douchebag. He can just be a hotshot douchebag nurse. Um, he can be our John Dorian. Oh God, that was too mean, even for Paris. Right. So science uh, headed up by Jean Luc Picard. His number two is going to be Lieutenant Lieutenant Commander Spock. Uh, young Spock, slightly young Spock. And after that's going to be Wesley. I like the idea of putting Wesley and Picard together. I like the idea of. Wesley's prodigy being more scientific, curiosity, exploration, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, being more of that and being less, oh, he good with engines, because that's, that's very narrow. I don't, I, don't, I don't have the reverence for engines that Star Trek sometimes has. It's getting kind of dark, but I can, I can just... I'm sure it's safe. Um... So McCoy, McCoy is our senior enlisted in the science department. He um, he is a biologist. He is a biologist, not a doctor. He has never been a fantastic. He's done some interesting things. Um, a lot of the most interesting achievements of doc. Oh shit, fuck. Okay, all right. Well, actually, that's helpful. Actually, I'm going to use you to mine out a little more of this. Um, I think a lot of his work has been in biochemistry. I think that's consistent with the character. Um, he does get to say, I'm a biochemist, I'm not a doctor. I think that's worth it in the end. Again, not a lot of elbow room for doctors. I think McCoy has one of the most, um, has a more versatile place that he can be used there. Uh, Chekhov in medical, oh, in science, I'm sorry, in science. Uh, he is always Spock's protege. There's no reason to change that. Um, I think sometimes he's seen as the chief of security on the Enterprise in the movies, and I don't think that ever holds a lot of water. And I got to think we're out of time. So uh, I will wrap this up later. I am two-thirds of the way through it, but until I get a good sign-off, man, I am going to get the heck out of here.